Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the briefing for Operation Dutch Harpoon. I, I hope you're enjoying the new ready room. Things are finally a little bit more habitable out here. Also, before we get down to brass tacks, I want to welcome our guest today. The Dunkirkers Naval PMC was good enough to join us and give us some frigate and some helicopter support for our sub-hunting operations. So, it's good to have them along. This briefing is brought to you courtesy of Major Quintan and myself. And we're going to give you a rundown of what our plan is for the next couple of days worth of operations. Now, here's the situation. Shortly after they got kicked off of St. Lawrence Island, we believe that Anger Peace, or dissident elements sympathetic to Anger Peace, got a hold of a former Greek, German-built Type 209 submarine. Now, make no mistake about this, this is a pretty dangerous little vehicle. It's got a, got a diesel electric engine, very quiet, very stealthy, armed with some pretty serious torpedoes. And they've been using it for one simple purpose, hunting the fishing trawlers operating in the Bering Sea. They've been sinking ships pretty indiscriminately. Iceberg, Mitsuhashi, unaffiliated, they've been sinking them all and they've been sinking them fast. Obviously, this is a major threat to Mitsuhashi's operations in the area, so this boat's got to be found and it's got to be taken out. Today, we've got three objectives. Number one, obviously, find, capture, or kill the hostile 209 submarine. Number two, provide air security for our aircraft and for the Dutch vessels. Now, we've been able to establish an agreement with the Iceberg Group. They won't fire on us if we don't fire on them. However, we haven't been able to get such assurances from the St. Lawrence Island groups. That means BSA and BNSC. We should assume that they may be hostile on this operation. We will engage them if they threaten us. Finally, our final objective is to eliminate the Mama battery on St. Lawrence Island. This salmon radar system is still a threat to us. If it fires on us, we're taking it down. Now, I want to give you a rundown on our strategy for ASW. If we sight a subcontact, the unit that spots that possible contact needs to stay in the area until they get PID on it. If the contact proves to be nothing, move on, continue with your search. However, if we spot a subcontact, we're going to vector all our ASW units, the MH90s, the frigates, the Atlantique, everything. We'll move to the area at flank speed and move to locate the target. Use everything you've got. Sono buoys, towed sonar arrays, MAD, dipping sonar, everything. Once we confirm the submarine contact, we're going to make contact with it using active sonar, or if we've got it, a Gertrude telephone. The message we're sending is simple. Surface, surrender, or you will be destroyed. It's that easy. Now, if the submarine confirms this message using one active sonar ping, we won't engage it. However, if the submarine continues maneuvering and refuses to respond to our objective, or if it fires on us, sink it, destroy it immediately. Now, if the submarine does surface, that's good news for us and good news for them. We'll communicate with it being a signal blinker or through radio, informing them that they will be boarded, they need to disarm, and get all the crew on deck. We're going to send in Kabi with his ground team via Hilo or a Zodiac to take over the submarine, and from there, we'll take it back to our home base. Now, if the submarine does not comply with any of our orders, as I said before, we're engaging it and destroying it. Now, moving on to the orders for our aircraft. All aircraft are to RTB when shotgun. Shotgun state for this operation is set. All BVR missiles fired for fighters. All strike aircraft. All air-to-service weapons missing. That means that if there are Phantoms airborne and all their AMRAMs have been fired, they are to RTB immediately. If 10 enemy aircraft are launched, we're launching Paso Flight. This is our Kafir Cap on standby. If less than three aircraft are on cap, we're launching Kafir Cap, the Paso Flight again. If enemy ships are spotted, we have a contingency order. We're going to have Trident Flight, Tornado, Sea Eagle missiles waiting on the tarmac. If they spot a ship, we'll launch them to a rally point. Once all the aircraft are airborne and ready, They'll proceed en masse and make a mass attack on the enemy ships they spot. They are not, I repeat, not to make a piecemeal one-by-one -one assault like the one we saw last operation. If the Mamba fires on any of our forces, the aircraft that it's fired on should immediately get out of the area. We're also going to launch Hickenbottom Flight. This is Tornadoes with Storm Shadows. They're going to go head to the south of St. Lawrence Island and using the waypoint programming on the Storm Shadow missiles, Program those missiles to approach the Mamba from the south and take it out. If our cap is not aircraft and not active, and there are enemy fighters airborne, born, I beg your pardon, airborne, no aircraft, no aircraft, no aircraft should approach those enemy fighters. They should all be withdrawn to a safe distance and hold there until we can get more fighters in the area. 
Now, we have some ROE and flight restrictions. We have three ROE rules. Number one, submerged contacts are not to be engaged until they are proven hostile or are attempting to evade us. If the enemy submarine destroys, you gotta destroy it. ROE number two, iceberg assets are not to be engaged unless they prove hostile and fire on us, or if they attempt to lock us up with fire control radars. ROE number three, there are no ROE restrictions on BNSC assets. If you see them, shoot them down. We also have some no-fly zone rules. No aircraft are to approach within the Mamba's 60 nautical mile engagement arc for any circumstances. This is a strong no-go zone. There's also a no-fly zone, 50 nautical miles from U.S. territory. We're respecting their territorial waters on this operation. MCON rules are simple. Argus, MH-90, Atlantique and Frigate radars, on at all times. Prowlers, OECM jamming, on at all times. Cap flight, keep your radars off if the Argus is up. If the Argus is down, radars on, be looking for targets. We have today a division of forces, our support force. We have two teams for Cobby's men. Number one, Team Whirlybird. Half of his men will be at Laverntia Airport, wearing water survival suits and life jackets. They'll have a Zodiac wrap with them. Their mission is to board an MIA helicopter. If the, uh, if the submarine is spotted, they will go, helocast, and board that submarine and take it until we can turn it, return it to shore. Our other group, Team Zodiac, the other half of Kali's men, they're in the frigate Nijmegen. They're going to have a high-speed RHIB or some other launch ready. If the sub surfaces, they'll immediately go to the area and board it and prevent it from being scuttled. Our support aircraft is Junkyard. Today, this is the MA-8 flying with half of Cobby's men on board. They'll wait on the tarmac at Laverntia. If the submarine surfaces, like I said before, they'll proceed to the area and drop Cobby's men on target. We also have Windmill. Our aircraft today is an EA-6B Prowler carrying the five jamming pod loadout. Its mission is to fly to max altitude and orbit just north of the search area. Its mission is to jam BNSC radars and gather in Eland on any aircraft, ships, or land vehicles that may be emitting radar or radar signals. We also have iSpy, our S-100B Argus. It will fly to max altitude and fly a racetrack around Point iSpy, providing AEW and C support. We also have our aircraft, Big Pig, the KC-135 tanker, flying at medium altitude and a racetrack around Point Big Pig to provide tanker support. If Big Pig goes down, I'd like to point out that Little Pig should also be available to launch and to help it out. Now for our ASW units, we have Irvine, the Atlantic 2, carrying eight torpedoes and a load of 140 sono buoys. Its mission is to fly a search ladder in the blue grid, this is the blue square area. It'll drop a net of passive and active sono buoys to monitor the area. If it spots a sound contact, as I said before, it'll vector to the area, drop active sono buoys, confirm the contact. If the enemy sub is spotted, it will circle it until a friendly helo or until a friendly frigate can contact it. If it refuses to surrender, or if it takes any hostile actions against ourself or fishing vessels, sink it. Now we have our three MH-90 ASW helicopters, call signs, Pegasus, All-American, and Screaming Eagle. They're going to fly a search ladder and they're assigned orange grids, dropping a network of passive sono buoys and using their dipping sonar to, act to monitor the area. If a sound contact is spotted, same protocol as before. We also have our three frigates, call signs, Arnhem, Nijmegen, and Eindhoven. These ships are going to be sailing search ladders in the red area. They're using their towed sonar, passive and active, to locate enemy submarines. Again, you know the drill. If a sound contact is spotted, look for it, order to the surface. If it surfaces, capture it. If it refuses, destroy it. Now for our combat air patrol, we have Copeland Flight, four F-4E Phantoms, armed with four AMRAMs, four Sidewinders, and one drop tank. These will be divided into two subflights, so only two will be airborne at any moment. Their mission is to provide CAT for the ASW assets and to engage any hostile air assets. Now, as I said earlier, if condition shotgun is met, that means all BVR missiles gone, all AMRAMs gone, RTB, rearm, and get back in the fight. We also have Paso Flight, the four Kafirs. Their job is to provide cap for the ASW assets. Only send up two at a time. Once two are, R two are RTB, launch the next pair. Then we have Junkyard Flight. This is going to be our two MiG-23 MLs, as well as our Sukhoi 15TM armed with the AA-3 missiles. 
Their mission is to wait on the tarmac at Lavrentia base. If 10 enemy aircraft are launched, we'll launch junkyard fleet and they'll engage. Now we also have our tactical reserve. On the runway, we have our aircraft, two Gripens with Max Meteors at Lavrentia base. If we see 10 plus enemy aircraft, we're going to launch them, have them engage enemy military targets. Once their shotgun, all missiles are gone, they'll RTB, quick turnaround, and get back into the station. Higgum bottom flight. This is our three tornadoes with two storm shadows each. They'll wait in the tarmac at Provd base. Again, if the Mamba fires, they'll take off and proceed southerly using waypoint programming on the storm shadows to engage the Mamba battery from the south. Then we have Trident flight. Four tornadoes with two Sea Eagle missiles each. Their mission is to wait on the Provd base tarmac. If BNSC service assets launch and prepare to attack our friendly forces, they'll take off and proceed as a group to a rally point. Once all aircraft are there, they'll move from the rally point and make a large en masse saturation attack to sink those BNSC assets. All right, gentlemen, get to your aircraft, get to your ships, get to your helos. Take off in 30 minutes. Let's find this sub and let's kill it.